Let's next take a look at the acceleration of the infinitesimal fluid particle written in an Eulerian frame of reference. So I'm looking at this term in f equal to ma. And this is my infinitesimal fluid particle at time t. I'm showing it smaller than I have shown in, in, in previous slides. So at time t, it's at some location x, y. And let's say, you know, let's restrict its motion to the x direction just to keep the details simple, and then we can generalize from here. And in time, you know, uh, at time t plus delta t, it's moved a distance, some distance delta x, and so it's at x plus delta x, y. And the amount it's moved is uh, given by the velocity over here times delta t. And this is valid in the limit as delta t tends to zero. Then the acceleration in the x direction is the velocity of the particle over here, um, that is at time t plus delta t, minus the velocity of the particle at time t. So the velocity here minus the velocity here divided by delta t, in, and with delta t tending to zero. This is a Lagrangian view because we are following the particle. We have to switch to the Eulerian view, and in the Eulerian view, um, we say, hey, you know, at time t plus delta t, the particle is at x plus delta x, y. So I look at the velocity field and take, you know, the velocity at that location in the velocity field. So I go to the velocity field and I say, oh, at that point, the, the velocity is x plus delta x and y, and that should be the velocity of the particle. So you see we're switching from Lagrangian to Eulerian, and then similarly at time t, its velocity is given by the um, the value at x, y, and then we have divided by delta t. If I look at the numerator here, again, I can do the same business of expanding, you know, in the Taylor series expansion. So over here, the velocity is slightly different, and it's given by the rate of change of u um, in this direction. So that's du dx times delta x, that distance. And then this is just, this term is just that. So in fact, I made a mistake here. This should be x, y, and this should be x, y. Sorry about that. And then I'll not, you know, in the limit as delta t tends to zero, delta x will also tend to zero, and I can knock off the higher order terms. Now I can use that expression in the numerator here. And here's what I'll get. I'll get the acceleration is uh, the change in velocity is given by that. So I'll get that term in the numerator divided by delta t. But delta x, the amount it's moved, it's given by the velocity times, you know, u velocity times delta t. So that's, I've used this over here. And then I can cancel out delta t and delta t and I'll get u du dx as its acceleration in the x direction written in terms of the, the velocity field. So the, the acceleration not only depends on the rate of change of u in the x direction, but it also depends on how much the particle moves in the x direction, and that's given by its velocity. And by the way, that's a nonlinear term because that's an unknown, that's an unknown and um, you have products of two unknowns. Similarly, if I you know, restrict its motion and look only at motion in the y direction, so I say at time t it's over here, and at time t plus delta t it's over there, then the, uh, the change in velocity, the rate of change in velocity is proportional to the spatial you know, derivative, so you're gonna get du dy, analogous to du dx, so how much the velocity changes in this direction, but it also go, going to, it's also going to depend on how much the particle moves in the y direction in time delta t, and that's going to be given by the v velocity, right? So if v is larger, it's going to move more, 
and and so that's going to change you know that's going to affect the acceleration in general the particle is going to move in both x and y so you have, you have to add these two contributions and you can write that you know ax is this plus the the contribution from motion in the y direction so this is from motion in the x direction and this is from motion in the y direction a contribution to the acceleration in the x direction and so the final expression looks like that for the acceleration in the x direction and similarly you can work out what's the acceleration in the y direction analogous you know everything's um, it kind of crosses over to thinking about in the y direction and the acceleration vector is the uh, acceleration in the x direction times i so that's just uh, this is just this term and then you get an analogous term in the y direction and that's multiplied by the, the normal in the y direction. And so that gives us the acceleration in terms of the velocity fields. And now we have all the terms and we can put together our final form of the differential form of f equal to ma. Let's take a look at that next.